Joining me now from Los Angeles is Hamoud Sali. He is the interim dean of undergraduate studies at California State University. Now, talk to me about the significance of this meeting. How do you view it? Uh, it's very, very significant, and it's long overdue. A reason for it, uh, this is sort of what was uh, the original idea when we started talking about the Oslo uh, Peace Treaty. At the time, uh, the idea was to create an atmosphere of mutual confidence measures where the parties trust each other, negotiate each other, under a principle of reaching a, a resolution to the conflict. This is a step in the right direction. The second thing, it's long overdue that we step outside the United States, uh, uh, being the peace broker of the Middle East peace process. United States obviously has some interest in this. China's interest, other than re seeing to it that this peace process is resolved, uh, also uh, include or may include the trade and economics, and that's not bad for the region. So the significance for it, it, it has to do with the fact that it is timely, and it is also so uh, uh, it, may, it may have some significant in terms of building some kind of uh, 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 mutual trust uh, uh, deeply needed at this, uh, this time. And perhaps uh, when you look at the agenda, the four points that, uh, uh, that are in the agenda, these are really the core of the, of the problem. Uh, that, uh, and for the parties to address them is a step in the right direction. Now, let's talk a little bit more about China's role in the peace process, because you, you mentioned uh, the two key words, honest broker, we heard today from Mahmoud Abbas. He said uh, he would reject any, any Middle East peace proposals coming from Washington, D.C., following the U.S. president's move to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. So will China play a larger role in this process moving forward? Do they sort of have to? Well, they don't, they don't have to. China is a sovereign state, uh, but it will be very, very helpful. A big reason for it is the fact that China has a history with the region. I mean, you could go back to the, to the Algerian Revolution uh, in the 50s, when the Chinese gave uh, the Algerians passports uh, to the United Nations to advertise or to promote their, their cause of national liberation. At the time, the French refused to allow the Algerians to be represented or to come to the UN. It was the Chinese that stepped in. Additionally, back in the 80s, the, uh, uh, the Chinese also were very, very supportive of President of National Authority uh, Yasser Arafat. They were one of the few people, uh, the, the, the earlier uh, supporters of the Palestinians. And the other thing is that they also have confidence with the Israelis. So China is set to play a major role should it choose to do that. But what we've seen uh, in, in, the, in the past, uh, the fact that the United that has been taking the lead in that uh, for China now to come and, and, and uh, fill the vacuum, uh, it will be very, very significant and important to the, 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 the peace process. You mentioned Israel. Of course, uh, President Xi Jinping met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu just back uh, last March. He was pushing for both parties at that time to coexist peacefully, saying a peaceful, stable, and developing Middle East serves the interests of all, including China and Israel. So is the role ahead one of just constructive engagement, uh, not necessarily a direct role? Uh, you were saying there's the vacuum. The U.S. kind of, uh, because of their position of late, uh, kind of removed from the process in a sense. Do you just, where do you kind of see them playing their role? Well, you know, what's happening is that the, uh, the dynamics, uh, the demographics in Israeli politics have changed. When the Chinese talk uh, to the Israelis about constructive engagement, uh, moving forward with, with some kind of uh, peace proposal, uh, they, they have in mind the old wise leadership, Israeli leadership who thought that the normalization of the Arab, uh, with, with the Arab world was the key to their security. That thing is still there, and it's very, very important that you, you, we uh, underscore that. And very important than anything else, there is at this point, these days, a, in Israeli politics and in Washington, groups that see best uh, to start talking about constructive ways of how to achieve uh, 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 p uh, the peace. There is what we've seen under Benjamin Netanyahu and other Israeli leadership, they came to be sort of uh, feeling comfortable with the fact that uh, 
uh, they have built a wall, uh, they have a, miss, a missile uh, protection. And so some, somewhat, when you look at the data, they, they have, the Israelis have, have been not uh, under a threat of terrorism as they used to be. But other Israelis, the, the wiser, the older, gen those who are, have followed the, the peace process, and even the Israelis themselves, most of them, recognize that a long-lasting peace has to be done uh, uh, through negotiations, through looking at the serious uh, uh, issue of uh, the Palestinians, and more than anything else, mm. uh, looking at the region, at the, the Israeli peace process from both perspectives, that if we talk about the Israeli security, we should also talk about the, the settlement, uh, settlement. And if we talk about uh -huh. uh, Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, we should also talk about another Jerusalem right. as the capital of Palestine. And I think that's what, what the Chinese understood. Right. And that goes a long way, uh, uh, if not now, but in the long term, I think it could be well, uh, very beneficial. We're going to have to leave it there. Hamoud, uh, thanks so thanks. much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Beijing.